200 layers, you're getting um, state-of-the-art accuracy. Oh, yeah, yeah, so the story. So the story's fantastic. So I was at lunch with a bunch of guys, and we were talking about you know, deep neural nets, and someone said uh, ResNets, and I was like, yeah, ResNets are amazing. And they're like, well, you've heard the story, right? I was like, the story? No, what's the story? I said, I said well, Kaiming was working at Facebook, I think, at the time. And, um, and they said uh, he was working on the ImageNet Challenge. He was trying to train deeper networks. And he was about to go on vacation. And he said, oh, you know, I had this idea of these, skip, like, these little residual connections. Like, it's like Friday, right? Friday at 4.30 or something. He's about to head off to vacation for the weekend. And he's like, oh, I'll just like code it up. So he like, codes it up. It takes like, like three minutes for him to code it up. He throws it on the GPU cluster and leaves. Comes back on Monday morning. <laughs> and it has like destroyed all the benchmarks. And he's like, whoa, what? And uh, so the guys, the, like the summary, like they said, the sort of the summary was, um, the conclusion, the, the wisdom to take from the story was, never leave your GPUs idle. <laughs> <laughs> just like, if you're going to go work for the weekend, just code up something simple and like throw it on there. <laughs> Good advice. So they, they, like, this is like, I think one of those great, it's a great story too, because it's like, it's not like people sat down and thought really, really hard about like, hmm, how can I make the Jacobian of these layers one? And oh, I know, what if I create this, you know, crazy residual, like it wasn't like that. It's like, they just like hacked something and I'm like, holy Hannah, it worked super well. <laughs> and then you go back and you like write this beautiful paper about Jacobians and do other studies and. It feels like the deep learning equivalent of like the penicillin discovery. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, it totally is, yeah. It's almost accidental, go ahead. Oh, I mean, since we've eliminated this ReLU, could we maybe simplify this over here? I mean, the simplest of those representations. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, okay, so, so this is the summary, Kaiming's summary. So don't mess with the identity path, because you'll be sad if you do. Um, but then, you know, but then, and like, Sky's the limit in terms of what you do on the non-identity path. And, and, and now, now that it's trainable, your conventional machine learning wisdom starts to kick in. I'm like, yeah, deeper networks work better. Go ahead. So, um, like the very beginning of class, first couple of days, we watched this video about um, like image recognition on like video, and you know, that was where you like, saw the wrinkles and things. Yeah. And in that kind of toolbox they created, it showed what cells depend on like, other cells, mm -hmm. like which, which neurons depend on other neurons. But in this case, there isn't a connection between each neuron individually. Every single one is just looking at the cumulative you know, work of all the other ones. So how do you kind of go back and analyze like what interdependencies there are? Mm -hmm. So you're saying, so you're saying like maybe there's, um, so you're saying, when we think about some neuron down here, yeah. and you want to know what is it receptive to, you're saying, well, now doesn't it feel like all kind of tied together? And yeah, because it's all just in yeah. a single you know, identity train. Um, right. Well, yeah. So, OK, you can still do the following. You can still say, if I have an input image up here, and I have a neuron down here, and I want to know what does this neuron respond to in this image. I can still compute the derivative of this neuron's activation with respect to this image. And the fact that there's this crazy chain of dependencies doesn't matter. So I can still ask that question. And I can still ask the question, given an image, which of these neurons is lighting up and which ones aren't. But we don't have specific one neuron relying on you know, 700. Well, you're right in the sense that this neuron now maybe relies, on, like in some sense, relies on all of these. But that was always true. It's just that it nonlinearly relied on them. And now it's kind of this, it's actually still a nonlinear reliance. It just has a very specific form of a linear bit plus a nonlinear bit. So there's still, you can still do dependency mapping and correlations across neurons. I think that's OK. We haven't really changed that. Good. Um, I think we're almost out of time. I forget. I feel like there was some, one more thing. Uh, depth, blah, 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 blah. Uh,
fascinating stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we should be done. Okay. Have a great day.